What is up everybody? It's Mining Office. I hope you're doing good. And today we're going to be looking at my Gigabyte Vision OC RTX 3070. Um, this is not a new card. It's a card I've had for a little bit now. Um, I got it originally in a combo with uh, the motherboard that's in uh, this computer and the CPU. It's a Ryzen uh, 5800. So yeah, obviously I built this computer with it. It's not the card that's in there. Um, but yeah, it's the card that came with that combo. So like I said, it's nothing new. Uh, it's been running for a while on Ethereum. It's a non-light hash rate. So that's what we're gonna check out today. Uh, it's hash rate basically on Ethereum and then comparing on Ravencoin as well. Um, so you can see here, uh, it has uh, obviously the triple fan, right? Windforce 3X cooling system, RGB Fusion 2.0. I mean, there there is RGB in the card, I guess. I was expecting more when they were talking about RGB. You'll see it's just like this little thing on the side basically. So kind of disappointing, but I don't really care. Um, and a metal black plate, which is always good. So um, overall, this is a pretty good card. Uh, the combo was over like $2,000 or something, but it was at the time where it was literally impossible to get graphics cards, no matter what. So I bit the bullet, and I think it's worth it to get a non-light, uh, yeah, well, a full hash rate card, basically. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's the card that's currently in here. You'll see it's mining Ethereum. It takes uh, one 8-pin and one 6-pin connector. Um, I don't know if that differs with the cards. I think it's pretty standard for a uh, 3070. And here you can see that metal backplate they're talking about. So, yeah. Honestly, it runs pretty cool. It has that triple fan, so um, it's, it's cooler than any of the other dual fan cards I have. I can't complain. All right, so I fished out the receipt here. You can see it was uh, $1,958 for the 5800X, uh, the 3070, obviously, and uh, the uh, Gigabyte uh, B550 Vision DP. So, yeah. All right, so taking into account, it is 31 and a half degrees in here. Um, but the, here we go. The 3070 is uh, consistently doing between 62 and a half and 63 mega hash. Uh, like I told you, it runs really cool. I have the fans just auto-locked on 60. Uh, it's about 51, 52 degrees. Uh, you can see it's pulling about 116 watts. I think it's reporting maybe a bit low. Call it 120 watts. Uh, but that's still really good for 62 and a half, 63 mega hash. Um, these are my overclocks. So you'll see my power limit is uh, 60, but that doesn't really matter because I'm using a locked core clock. So... Uh, my lock core clock is set to 1100 and my memory clock is set to 1350. Um, I used to run at 1400, I would get 63 mega hash a bit over, but sometimes I would crash um, and get rejected chairs, rarely, but still. So I just cranked it down a bit and this has been running, as you can see, for six days and four hours, or basically five hours. So super, super stable. Uh, super, super consistent and uh, very efficient. You can see 545 uh, kilohash per watt. Uh, that is really good. So again, a lock core clock, 1100, and memory clock, 1350 on, uh, on this gigabyte card. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut down this miner. Um, pretty sad because it has six days, but I'm gonna shut it down. Uh, I'm gonna get it running on uh, this over here. I have my Raven coin going oops sorry wrong one i have the raven coin uh obviously my 3080 and my 3060 ti uh, going there so i'll get it mining on raven coin and then i'll start overclocking it so here's the batch file i have i used to mine raven coin on my 3080 and 3060 ti so uh, people often ask me what i do to configure the batch file so i'll, I'll show you guys uh, basically here i know my 3070 is device one so i'm going to go ahead and add it into the batch file um, so my fans, I, I'll put them on, let's say, 70% for now. Actually, let's put them up to 85% because we're going to uh, start at a high power limit. Uh, and always put the second argument since now this is the second device uh, in order, right? So it's device one, but in this list, it's the second device. So you always want to put the second argument here. Uh, and a power limit, we will start at 100, work our way down, and... Again, memory clock and core clock, I will leave all this stuff just at zero. And what we will do is play with it in Afterburner. And once we have the settings locked in how we want it, um, then we'll just transfer them to the T-Rex batch file and uh, that'll be it. All right, so I let it stabilize. 
Uh, you can see at 100% power limit, zero on the overclocks, we're getting about 25.8 mega hash at 263 watts. So that 263 uh, is, is quite a lot. We're gonna try and lower that. So let's get into overclocking. Uh, we're gonna start playing with the memory, uh, then the core and the power. So let's see what we can get in uh, MSI Afterburner. I slowly took the memory up to what I had it on Ethereum, 1350. I don't really wanna push it more than that. And right now that gives me 31 mega hash. So that's pretty good. Um, and like I said, now the next thing I'm going to do is play with the core and play with the power limit. So I'll check back in after I've done uh, those things. After testing, core clock did nothing. Uh, disclaimer, um, I didn't play with the locked core clock. Normally I do that when I find my efficiency isn't that high. Um, I don't think I'll need to play with it this time because you'll see the efficiency. And I just dropped the power limit to 55 without losing any mega hash. So this is what that gives. We're still at our 31 mega hash. And you can see we're pulling 148 watts. So that's an efficiency of 209 kilohash per watt. That's, that's a lot more than I expected. Um, I thought the data I'd gotten from Red Fox uh, from last video um, was you know, pretty high and I was gonna, gonna get lower than that. But you can actually see that I'm, I'm getting slightly more mega hash uh, and drawing slightly less power. So um, that's really good. You can see that it's the most efficient card by far that uh, that I have here. So it's a crazy test. Let's uh, let's go over to this computer. I'm going to put in the data in the data sheet from uh, last time, and we're just going to compare Ethereum to Ravencoin quickly. So let's jump over. All right. So quickly, I just want to compare uh, to the data from my last video. So you can see this is my Gigabyte card and Red Fox's Zotac card. Uh, hash rates are very similar. Uh, our power draws are very similar as well, but my card outperforms his slightly a uh, little bit. Uh, you can see that in the efficiency here, uh, 198 versus 209, so almost 10 kilohash per watt more efficiency. Um, and here, what I put uh, for the price is uh, just an estimate, since again, it was in a bundle. Uh, I priced it, I mean, based on the 3060 Ti price and the 3080, knowing that, again, there is a 3070 Ti step in between. So I thought 1,100 is fair, again, Canadian dollars. Uh, so that gives a dollar per mega hash here again, quite high, like the 3060 TI, but again, for this best efficiency, you're going to be saving a little bit on, uh, electricity. Um, again, you can see my overclocks here. Um, and, um, next thing I want to do is just go quickly here into what to mine. You can see that for ETH hash, I put in my values I had recorded and same thing for Kapow here. So this is how you can decide basically what you should be mining if you want to go just for the most profitable. So we'll click on calculate um, and we'll go down. So it tells us here our most profitable is uh, Ethereum, ETH, uh, profit of $4.90 uh, with electricity. That's $4.65 uh, for the electric cost. I put in 0 0.09. Um, so you can see uh, that we get 465 for ETH. Uh, and Raven is not that far behind, actually, uh, with uh, 393. So the electric cost is going to be greater on Raven, uh, slightly. But uh, yeah, you, you can see that it's really not that far behind. I mean, people worry a lot. Uh, you know, I can get a card at this price. It's LHR. Um, you know, what can I mine with it? Should I do it anyway? I can't mine Ethereum. Nah, nah, nah. Well, number one, you don't know that Ethereum will stay locked on LHR cards forever, right? There's the NB miner, which unlocks to theoretically 70%. Who knows when uh, we'll have a 100% unlock, right? And you can see, even if Ethereum disappears tomorrow, Ravencoin is really, uh, really not that far behind. So in, in that sense, I can't complain. Uh, I'll mine Ethereum on the cards I can, that it's most profitable until I can't mine Ethereum anymore. And then I'll gladly put them on Ravencoin without even worrying. So when people, you know, think about their ROIs and think, well, my ROI is longer than Ethereum is going to be around, that doesn't bother me too much because, I mean, again, this depends on your card. It depends on the power that is drawn for that card. We're looking at a very efficient you know, the most efficient 30 series card from what I understand, from what I've tested. But uh, 393 versus 465 is really not that big of a difference. Uh, of course, it'll heat a little more in the summer. It's a pain in the butt. And all these prices are in Canadian dollars, all right? So uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to show you guys. So you can see that, I mean, Ethereum is most profitable. There's no surprise there. I already put my card back on Ethereum, uh, my 3070. 
But like I said, once uh, once the time comes and it goes proof of stake, I will hop on the Ravencoin train uh, like I'm doing with all my LHR cards. So yeah, that's it. If you like the video, you like the analysis, all the data, uh, please leave a like on the video and uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and bring you guys more content like this, uh, informative stuff, doing some testing. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys like it. If you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments and uh, take care, everybody.